Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of Slightly Unmeditated, a casual talk podcast about the WTFs of spirituality, self-improvement, and motivation, with two lifelong empath friends who suck at meditation. And you can listen to our other episodes of Slightly Unmeditated weekly on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any other cool podcast place. Check out our brief introduction podcast to find out more about who we are. Sounds good. Hey, so my name is Tisha, and this is my co-host, Lori. Uh, We've actually known each other since we were born, as our dads were best friends, and our moms kind of hung out in school. And uh, our quick backstory is in the introduction that we have posted already, and uh, you can listen to that. Trailer. But correct, correct. But we're here on the podcasting circuit um, because we kind of been having a lot of questions about our own spiritual journey and uh, awakening as it is. And we figured that other people were kind of questioning it too. Yeah, we've been um, talking about topics that come up naturally in our everyday. And Tish and I have been having conversations over the phone and we thought, yeah, there've got to be other people who understand the same thing and maybe are struggling just as much as we're struggling. And again, it's really important to have people who you trust and who you feel you can talk about these things with because not everybody gets us. And so it's really important to have somebody who gets you. And we're hoping that you will um, you know, get something from this and be able to relate. And um, we're putting it out there. So we're doing this first podcast kind of from the hip, uh, talking a little bit about whatever sort of comes to mind um, and just seeing how it goes. And uh, one of the things that Lori and I have in common is I think um, we're both empaths. And so everything that's been going on in the year of 2020 has been uh, overwhelming and sort of chaotic. So I feel like this is a really good time to sort of start talking about uh, people like us who, who as an empath sort of take on other people's energies and, and feel what other people are feeling are all sort of starting to feel really kind of weird uh, about what's going on in the energy in the world. Absolutely. Um, We've been talking and... uh, (laughs) (laughs) This is live. So, um, (laughs) recorded live. (laughs) Anyway, um, so we've been talking about how we are so affected by the energy the minute we walk out the door. Um, to leave the house. I mean, honestly, I feel it outside. I feel like sometimes the electric in my body is on high alert, um, or you get those that that those goosebump kind of feeling. Um, just like, what the heck am I feeling? And you know, is this? Did I wake up feeling this way? Did I feel this way fifteen minutes ago? What just happened? Just it was just actually a couple of years ago, as you know, um, I started researching myself, just good old Google searches, like, why am I feeling crazy like this? And why, you know, what, where is this coming from? And that is when I discovered the word empath. Um, for me, it was always feeling completely overwhelmed in crowds and uh, public places or around certain people. And I really didn't have a history of like anxiety or anything like that. So it didn't really make any sense. And uh, a couple searches later, I started figuring out like, it's not just me, it's other people doing this. And so then Lori and I, when we started talking about it, we realized having known each other our whole lives, but not really speaking to each other for the last 30 years, that we we're both sort of in the same boat, like, oh, well, you feel like this too? Yeah, I feel like this too. And uh, I, I don't know, I think other people feel like that as well. But to to kind of talk to people who don't understand, they just feel like a crazy person. Absolutely. You get a lot of those looks. People kind of look at me like, what do you mean? You know, a lot of people can detach. And uh, we just had a really nice conversation. And I'm going to reference it now that you were saying Tisha to me just a few weeks back. It's so weird because I can only reference my own frame of mind. 
um, we know what we feel and we assume everybody else feels or thinks the same and they don't. Some people are just created that they don't have that same level of perception emotionally, um, physically, um, you know, you name it. Um, and it's not wrong, right, or indifferent. It's just is. And so it's hard to remember that somebody you might be talking to who's looking at you like, hmm, I'm not quite sure what she's saying about feeling people's energy um, because they don't. It's just not their journey right now. And on the reverse side of that, I can understand how people don't feel empathy towards other people, even if even I mean, now people barely know what the word empathy means. But as an empath, you overfeel those things. And so I can't imagine life not absorbing that energy or feeling that I don't know how people just skate through life, like totally unaffected by it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm the person that's driving down the street. And I see, say, a garbage can in the street, right? Because it blew out on garbage night, whatever. I literally feel compelled to go like move it because somebody might run into it. Somebody might whatever. Like, and I know that's not like the the best example of empath because it's usually feelings, but I'm, I'm projecting feelings. Right. Um, you know, and so I have to like force myself to be like, no, just don't immediately stop. It's not always my responsibility. Like sometimes it is appropriate and it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't have to be at everybody's beck and call for every need. It's it's the compelled to do part. Like you have to, you know, donate to every fundraiser you see. And, you know, it could be you that could be in this situation. And then you so overthink it that uh, we burn out, quite frankly. And, and in fact, that's why I started Googling the whole empath theory to begin with, because I was just so burnt out. But it wasn't by my own self. I wasn't doing things that were burning myself out. It was the energies of people I was around all the time, um, you know, and not setting boundaries, things like that. And let's face it, family, friends, mm, you know, some of them we pick, some of them we don't. And, you know, it requires a lot of energy sometimes to be able to deal with people we love and we care about and they're in our lives and we want them there. However, we can get carried away with um, being concerned about their feelings and putting ours aside. Uh, right. It can be so overwhelming to have the feelings. Right. So one of the things I've said to Lori several times now, uh, the deeper our conversations get on the phone, I'm starting to wonder, like I have a very few set amount of friends, probably three and, and Lori, I guess you would be four, technically, uh, who understand and can talk sort of on a different level with me about these things. Um, oddly, many of them were some lifelong people and then some people who are relatively new to me. Um, but I feel like it's those core people that are still around and everyone else has gone away or went on their own journey. So I found that incredibly interesting. But in light of the disasters of 2020, um, I started thinking of the analogy about us empaths sort of realizing something's, I think most empaths figure out kind of early that something is different about them in some way, even though we can't pin it down. And it took me 40 years to kind of figure that out myself. So you know, don't feel bad if you're late to the party. But I sort of feel like uh, my analogy is the Twilight movie um, in one of the the second to the last movies or whatever, when all of the, the uh, Indian boys are turning into wolves faster than they imagined because more vampires were coming to the area. And so I feel like in light of the 2020 disasters that people – empathetic people and highly sensitive people are sort of waking up for a lack of a better way to say it and sort of realizing like, Hey, wh why, you know? And so it made me start thinking like, that's why 
we need to do a podcast like this so other people who are questioning what the heck is wrong with me, why am I such a weirdo, you know, why can't I go outside anymore, um, got a little insight without being completely overwhelmed by some of the heavy spiritual stuff that's out there now. Absolutely. And I totally understand everything you're saying and can relate to so much, Tisha. And I've got also a core group of people that I can trust enough to speak my true heart, my true feelings, um, and really my confusion on a daily basis about what we're doing here, why we're here, what's going on. Um, You know, obviously, and I've been using this analogy a little bit, is when we got to clean out a closet, you know, we got a really messy closet and um, you take that before picture, you look and it's overwhelming and then you start pulling everything out, right? And then all that stuff has to go somewhere, right? So say the closet's off the kitchen and um, you pull everything out onto the kitchen floor, the kitchen table, the kitchen tops, and it's stuff everywhere, right? And it looks worse than what the closet was (laughs) because then it was contained, right? Now it's freaking everywhere, right? (laughs) Now it's like, what the hell do I do with it? Now I started this. And now I got to finish it too, because now it's in my way. (laughs) So, but you get to do an inventory. You get to see what's in there. What have you used? What have you not used? Anyway, it's, it's, it's a lot of regrouping, looking at everything, looking at all the pieces. Then we start putting it back in the closet. Okay. And then you really have what you want and the closet looks good. And maybe you throw some stuff out. Maybe you keep some stuff, whatever. Maybe stuff goes to, you know, recycle, goes to other places. But it's all process. And that's what I believe 2020 represents as much of a shit show as it's been. Um, You know, it really has been a time to really look at absolutely what is going on. I mean, we had no idea that there was so much upheaval under the surface. And unfortunately, um, people in power and um, organizations and cultural beliefs came to light of, you know, negativity, hatred, anger, all this we we've really seen now. Now we cannot deny it's there. We've pulled everything out of the closet. It's not even being seen. It's like slapping us in the face repeatedly. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it took. It literally took that right. to happen. For us to see it. And I think we can, you know, we can start now really truly dealing with it. But again, People like us who are highly sensitive people, who feel our emotions, um, who feel others' emotions, um, can get really tanked during this time. I mean, really shut down. I've slept a lot. I've whined. I've kind of like wandered around my house going, what the hell do I want to do? I don't, I, I love reading. I couldn't pick up a book and read. I'd put the TV on, didn't want to watch TV. It was everything. I was restless. And I think- here. I I think that's one of the most important things for people who don't really realize yet what's happening to them uh, in a, in a, so to speak, what's happening to them. But I think that's it is that they don't realize maybe that this energy isn't theirs. I know I beat myself up repeatedly. Why am I just laying around watching TV? Because I have absolutely no motivation to do anything else. Right. And then I my own doing. Call. Then I usually get a phone call or I call Tish because I'm feeling her vibe and I say, Hey, what's going on? And she's like, Oh my God, I'm so like, no, you know, not good for anything. I've just been laying around and I'm like, well, you probably needed it. And when you're, you're done with that, you'll get motivation again. And I think that's one of the hardest things for us too, because we, we care about, the world. We care about ourselves. We care about other people. And like, we want to be productive people who offer something to this world in a positive way. And so we get hard on ourselves when we're not doing something that we feel like we quote unquote should be doing. Um, You know, and, you know, sometimes we need to just check out to regroup. Yeah. Very, very difficult to do. But uh, as an empath, that's like, really one of the most important things you can do is like you you have to recharge you have to give yourself permission and this is something I've just been learning in the last year so give my permission to just sit and veg out do nothing let my brain rest before I took that like offensively 
how how could I just sit here and do nothing? I have to do this and that and this and and it became so overwhelming that I just couldn't do it anymore. I had no choice but to do nothing. Yeah, the exhaustion physically sets in or um, what a lot of people now are referring to compassion fatigue. Um, there's a lot of good books out there about, um, you know, just losing, losing your drive to be able to physically, mentally, emotionally give anything. You know, we just we hit that empty in the tank and we are empty, empty, empty. The car is not moving. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And and, you know, some people to, some people when you have to be around them, they're called energy vampires going back to the vampires again. But uh, they literally just suck the energy out of you. And, I, you know, I didn't get that before. I always thought it was something on my end. Like, what am I doing wrong? You know, but it's actually coming back to the empath thing of of um you being so hyper aware of other people's energies and unless you learn how to balance that and protect yourself something i'm still learning every day uh how to do that you know to kind of get out of your head absolutely i uh, one of the one of the best gifts i ever received from a friend was a suggestion for psychic protection spiritual protection and um, again, there's a lot of information out there about it um, and a lot of different ways you can do it. Like, uh, you know, what works um, for my friend and, and she's so clear about it. Like, it's so awesome because it, it totally resonates with her. She like when she's in the shower, she literally imagines the water is white light and it's coming down and she pictures herself in a bubble of white light and that feels protective and all her yuck and all her feelings and all her, you know, just heaviness and everything else that's weighing on her from the world, she's imagining going literally down the drain and out. And the white light is coming in and kind of flushing everything out. And that really works for her. I've tried this a couple of times and I can't freaking do it. I, I, I like get in there and I'm like, I don't know. I, it's just not resonating for me. You know what I mean? So what's your go-to? <laughs> so my go-to is um, actually, I just, you know, some days I don't know what I'm praying to and I don't know what I'm praying for, but I need help. So I basically put it out there and I'm like, listen, I really need some freaking help here. And I'm like getting batshit crazy and I'm tired and I just don't even know what to do next. And then I sit and I wait. <laughs> right. And right. So when somebody walks into my office and they're like, oh, Lori. And I'm like, OK, this is what I'm supposed to do and get out of kind of my own way a little bit. Right. Not to take on that, but that it just shifts my energy. Um, I, I don't know. You know, it's it just so works because I right. can't surrender in that moment. Well, I think that's what people need to know, too, is that it it's what works for you. Because, you know, we called this podcast Slightly Unmeditated for a very specific reason in that both of us truly suck at meditation. Um. I have to admit that I am getting slightly better at being meditated. Um, I, I can't do it every day on some schedule. I feel it sort of loses its purpose. But I also am now starting to feel after years and years of trying something or another that I can come to the chair and use my little Spotify playlist and find a five-minute song and sit for five minutes at least. Sometimes I do 10 and 15 and surprise myself. And then I'm finally getting something out of it. But for many years, I didn't. And if you read any article about self-help and reducing anxiety and balancing your energies, the first words they freaking say are meditation, journaling. I'm a writer. I, I trade. Feel. I can tell how you really feel as in the in the voice inflections you're giving. Right, right. Well, it's it's always I'm a writer by trade. I'm per probably a person writing these articles, right? <laughs> the last thing I want to do sometimes is write, you know. So I'm trying to find other ways to um get out the energy and you know, kind of balance myself a little bit more. I do practice the white light a little bit, but sometimes I forget in the heat of the moment. Right. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, that happens to all of us. Um usually I I send out my Batman signal, you know, when it's like 
like I, I have no other options. You know what I'm saying? Like um, some of my other go-tos are that um, I will just read a positive quote, just, you know, just to shift my energy, literally. Um, you know, I, I, again, a great friend um, just had bought me a wonderful gift and it's, it's this crazy, like just little, like, basically like an I don't know how I'm going to do today kind of little journal. And um, one of the quotes in there was, um, I'm not okay, you're not okay, and it's okay. And I would love, I love, I love that. It just, <clears throat> right then, it just made me feel connected to something, to everyone. Right. You know, and it was like, okay, this isn't just all about me. I'm not the only one going through this. And so I immediately felt not only compassion for myself, but just a gentle relaxer. Like, it's okay. We're all fucked up. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, my go-to is just uh, positivity. And I I always have to find the silver lining. I've been like that my whole life. Yes, you have. Uh, <laughs> when I was in college, I remember people saying like, how the hell do you wake up happy and ready to go every single day? I don't know. Like, I... I've lost a little of that, of course, as you get older and have a family and a thousand responsibilities, but I, it's still at the heart of who I am. I, somebody says a problem, I'm like, but at least you have, or at least you have this or whatever. And along with that is also um, just being grateful. Mm -hmm. You know, they, that we're both um, followers of the law of attraction as well, I'm sure we'll talk about later, but being grateful is at the heart of everything. You know, you're mad at the world and if road rage and whatever, but like, do you ever stop to think, well, Jesus, it's a good thing I have a car. Right. Really, road rage in, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad I have the freedom to drive. Yeah. But I'm fully capable of driving or whatever. I mean, like, do you ever, I, I think in those terms constantly. So I guess I don't really have a choice, but to be positive, you know, a choice. It just comes innately natural for you because you are an optimistic person. And I, and I, you know, I truly believe that you feel hopeful that things are moving in a better direction every day and that you're part of that, you know, that you're offering something to that. And, um, you know, I think that, I mean, I was just saying, like, before we we're doing this podcast, just a few minutes before, I was just saying, you know, like, here we are two people who are, you know, again, in this shit show of 2020, reflecting on all of this. It's like, we still wake up believing in the good. We yeah. still wake up going, you know what, I'm surprised by this craziness that just happened. Oh, well, I guess it's good. We're still surprised because we right. expect it to be crazy. You know, we expect it to be getting better. And in a lot of ways it is. And we, we all know, we've all heard this. You don't hear about the good stuff regularly on the nose. Yes, we know it, but that doesn't mean we always get it. You know what I mean? Well, I think that's a cop out. I think that if you're only looking at the news for your self-motivation or whatever, maybe it starts with you. It starts there. You need to find good news to read. Don't, you know, yeah, don't let's not even on the negative. Let's not even go on to anti-social media, you know, exactly. download some articles that are positive. You know, there are tons of motivational things out there. You just need to prioritize reading them. Absolutely. And then, and that's all tied in with self-care. You know, we've got to make sure that we are always on the lookout for making ourselves feel slightly better in the moment, even if it means putting the TV on mute and not listening to what's on the TV or just slowing down for a moment. So we have absolutely got more to talk about, about self-care being so important. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it'll tie in with a million topics that we could ever come up with. Uh, but in the meantime, it's a nice time to talk about and give some props to our first slightly unmeditated sponsor, Bubbles and Books. 
You can find them at bubblesandbooks.com. And they specialize in self-care by offering a monthly dose of reading and relaxation delivered right to your house. So you can put your essential self-care and energy, energy cleansing on autopilot. I mean, you're just starting at $25 a month. And the subscription box comes with books and some amazing handmade luxury bath and body items. I know like bath bombs and some, uh, I can't even tell you, I'm not supposed to spoil the surprise, but you get to choose your favorite book genre, contemporary romance, paranormal romance, historical romance, or maybe if romance isn't your thing, you can try mystery and thrillers. So, I mean, all of these subscriptions include a free ebook download for a romance each month. And you can also choose the ebook option you prefer to read on your waterproof Kindle. So, when you get in your bath, you can kind of do both relax and read, two of my favorite things. And you can get just one box or you can subscribe. So, that just shows up every month, right? So definitely visit our friends at bubblesandbooks.com. Tell Debbie I said hi and sign yourself up. And if you're maybe not a reader or know someone that is, go ahead and send them a box. And then you're sending a box of self-care to someone you love. Mm, That's great. I'm definitely very impressed with that service. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Hey, and thanks to Bubbles and Books for sponsoring this uh, somewhat slightly unmeditated podcast. (laughs) Absolutely. Again, giving gratitude, giving props and gratitude to the people that support us and who we love supporting as well. Um, Because, you know, we're not we're not here alone. You know, we were not meant to do this alone. We're, We're we're human beings and we're meant to want to share life with each other. You know, we, we thrive on, on connection, you know, on some level in every way. And, um, you know, it, it's hard to find those people that you connect with, you know, we go through life and it's confusing, you know, and we find people who we can, um, who we attract. Okay. And they might not be the best people for us. <laughs> they may just be attracted to some part of us that's desirable to them. Okay. Because as we mentioned before about the toxic vampires um, or energy vampires or toxic people or again many different verbiages for the descriptions for those that we can find out there in the world and it's like you know sometimes our helping energy um, attracts their needing energy (laughs) yes so again boundaries Um, and so you know I would love for us to talk about a little bit about you know boundaries or you know I know we both have scenarios where we have just had to put our foot down and, um, you know, hold people accountable in our lives and um, for our own self-protection, for our own self-protection. And that's hard when it's somebody you love and you live in the same house with them. (laughs) Right. Or you're related to them and you have to see them or associate with them in some way. (laughs) Exactly. And so, you know, like, Like sometimes it's a matter of instead of seeing someone in person, which has been a little bit easier since 2020, because we've been on quarantine and isolation a bit. So it's been a nice kind of excuse. Silver lining, silver lining. Yeah. And honestly, and that was a funny thing, right? How many times before 2020 have you heard people say to you, oh my God, I wish I didn't have to Venice of my family this holiday. I a million have times. have to do that, right? A million times. Did you hear anybody freaking post on Facebook? Oh my God, I'm so grateful I didn't have to visit my family. No, God forbid, they admit it. Really, you're still whining. We just, you know, okay, silver lining. They gave you what you wanted and now you're not happy. What's with that? You know what? I'm saying that. I said that before about anti-social media. Um, I have one account and unfortunately... Uh, fortunately it's for work purposes that I have to maintain it. Um, but it, I, I become judge Judy. You go through and you're scrolling and you're like, Oh, whatever. whatever. And I'm not that person. I don't want to be that person. So I have to, you know, I put the app on like page six of my phone. So I have to work harder to get there. Uh, I haven't signed up for any other, you know, traps to get into. Right, right. 
And it's just part of self-preservation. We're kids of the 80s. We grew up getting kicked out of the house and told to come back, you know, in the in the first thing in the morning and told to come back when the street lights came on. Absolutely. I mean, that's, and we loved it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We adored it and can't imagine living that way. And as a parent now, I would never let that happen. (laughs) So, you know, there's learning curve. There's a learning curve is there as well. You want to, you want to give people the best of the experience and then, you know, like put anything out on Facebook or whatever And if you're opening the door to all those negativity and the comments, or if you're looking just at the comments, maybe rethink about what you're reading, you know, because the more, the more of that negativity you're absorbing has to go somewhere, right? Yes. And it comes and it internalizes in our bodies. And if we don't release it, guess what? Next thing you know, your shoulder's aching. And how are we releasing it? Screaming at a person who didn't put their turn signal on when you're driving to the grocery store to get some milk and eggs, right? Right. Like, exactly. You get mad at that person. Because we're a big loaded can of gasoline and then that's a spark. Boom. You know, and so if we're easily if we're we're readily and often, again, when we think of it, okay. So here's the big thing, because we suck at meditation. I, I suck at anything consistently, honestly. Like, I mean, I love structure. I do. I need to get out of the house, right? Okay, but maybe not five days a week for work. Maybe three would be great. You know, maybe like 10 to two, you know, instead of like nine to five. But, you know, I'm working toward it. I'm working toward it. It's good. It's good to have goals, right? Good to have goals. So there's right. goals for that. So, but I never get to work at the same time. And a, a grateful, very grateful that I have work environments that this is allowable. I know what my schedule is. I know when I have to be there and I'll stay, whatever, blah. I get my job done. But I really have trouble, like, because I'm a feeling person, right? So I got to feel it. I got to, like, feel the need to meditate, which is, I don't always meditate. But meditate in the traditional way. So my meditation now is I'll put on tunes, love music. And and are you a person who, like, has to, like, you feel what you want to listen to? Yes. Oh, I feel this way today. Let me put on this type of music, right? I do the same thing when I'm picking out my pajama pants. Yes, exactly. <laughs> my food. I eat based on emotion. Okay, so that's a whole nother podcast right there. <laughs> um, we'll get back to that. But okay, but you know, sometimes that's really good because you know, hot warm, you know, hot soup if you're feeling cold, you know, cold cereal if you're feeling hot, you know, whatever. You know, so again, when we get that that signal that we're angry or we're tired or frustrated or whatever, you know, the important thing right then is, is to, to stay calm and still be positive, like, and not beat ourselves up, like not go to shoot. I didn't meditate today. And that's why I feel shitty now. No. Right. I see. Yes. No, don't do that. Just say now, right now, I need something. I need to take a deep breath. Let me step outside and take a deep breath of fresh air. Boom. Right? Yes. So this is definitely a podcast I want to do in the near, very soon future about being present because that is a topic I have struggled with and quite honestly didn't even understand. I mean, I understand what the words mean. Right. But in theory, I'm like, well, I'm right here. Like in the last few weeks, this has been a central topic for me of being present and understanding what it means and actually following through with that. Um, but again, say it for another day, but absolutely. you're absolutely right. A- acknowledge what's happening to you and move on. If you complain about it and you just bitch to every single person, you know, mm-hmm. you're just putting that negative energy out and guess what? You're getting it all back. It's not going to go away. Yeah. And in, in law of attraction and, um, you know, there's many discussions out there in different ways it's said, but the universe does not know the word don't. So I'm going to do the famous one. Uh, don't think about the Statue of Liberty. What did you just imagine? I know you all imagine the Statue of Liberty. How can you not? I just said it. Does your brain know the don't? It doesn't. So day at the beach. Here's one I do a lot because I love the beach and um, we are East Coast here. So um, we don't get to go in the freezing cold, 
But on those nice, nice days, um, when I do love to drive down to the beach, it's like, okay, we don't want it to rain, right? Mm -hmm. No, we don't want it to rain. But if you say don't rain, rain is what you put out there. So Mm -hmm. I've come up with this. So I like a sunny day. So I like to say, I like a comfortable sunny day. I expect a comfortable sunny day. Now I know the naysayers are going to be out there. I lived with one for many years, many, 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 many years, (laughs) giving myself credit there. (laughs) I survived it. Okay. You know, well, it doesn't always happen that way. Well, okay. So that internal belief is what you need to break down. I am now believing that anything is possible because I have been through a lot and enough to say, you know what? Anything is possible and anything negative is possible and anything positive is possible. They're equally as possible. Yep, absolutely. And I choose to believe that. Tisha, I know you choose to believe that at times. Like sometimes I know we just want to be pissy and we want to whine and we get. We don't really believe it. We just need to vent it. So that's another way that we're venting what we're feeling and our frustrations. Yes. Um, You know, but then it's like, you know, I need to get that out because sometimes we just need to be whiny and vent it and be pissy. It doesn't last forever. It lasts for five minutes now. And now I don't have to like take anybody out doing it. Like <laughs> I'm right. safer now. <laughs> right. Well, I'm not, I'm not ever comfortable when I feel like that. Like I don't even like the word whiny. I didn't. Oh, no, you I, don't. It gives me the skin crawls. Like I don't, I, I just prefer to not feel that way. So well, that's human nature. None right. of us really want to feel negative, but it's necessary. Well, no, there's a difference between whining and I'm a little bitch oh, that's true. as opposed to I'm feeling negative today. True. true. You know, I just don't let myself do that. I have to think, okay, well, what's a positive thing that will make me feel not this way? You know? Absolutely. Moving up on the, uh, the emotional, the emotional scale. scale. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And that's part of a law of attraction. Um, which is something we both, you know, it actually is a, a saving grace for me a lot of times because I remember those things uh, about the importance of being positive and putting out the good. I saw a really cute thing and I don't really remember the concept of it, but someone had said that they leave uh, energy glitter, mm-hmm. positive energy glitter wherever they go. And that was such a great visual. Oh, I love that. Yeah, right? Plus it gets everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Glitter, you can't help but have it everywhere, right? That's actually quite amazing, yeah. Um, I did it with purple glitter paint yesterday, and I had it on my shoes this morning. In a totally different room they were. I don't even know how that happened, but it did. And it made me smile. Right. In the project. So there you go. How could you be mad at glitter? Yeah, glitter. I love that. Great, great, great suggestion, (laughs) Tisha. Well, I'll remember that next time there's a glitter bomb coming in your mail. <laughs> Spring loaded. Maybe that's what we need in the world right now. Big glitter bomb. <laughs> yeah, they actually sell them because I was looking for prank gifts uh, for Christmas for my brother this year. And uh, sure your brother would have loved glitter. <laughs> you know what? The only reason I didn't spend the money was because there's no way for me to see his reaction when he opened it. And that's and- the whole point, right? Yeah, so I was really not buying my, I wasn't, I wasn't getting my money's worth from that. Right, you have to do it when you're actually going to see him. Keep one, order one and keep it in the house for the next time he visits. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll have to be a, a, a self-delivered present that I need to, to invest in, but Absolutely. definitely for sure. Oh my gosh, but see that, that's, and I'm sure he would love you for it. I mean, once he got over the pissed offness. And him. the revenge would probably be pretty ugly. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's an important factor. So, yeah, yeah definitely. But, um, yeah, it's good. You know what? It's been really good um, here talking with you. Um, I definitely know that earlier today, you know, we always get a little bit like, how are things going to go? How are we going to do with this podcast? Because we're new to it and we're we're still futzing around with trying to figure out all the software and hardware and gadgets and plugging in and plugging out. <laughs> right. But, you know, I think we have both... Um, I know I've definitely enjoyed this conversation and I'm hoping that people who are listening out there have enjoyed it too. I think it's just been really wonderful to be able to just share openly. And, um, you know, we're absolutely looking forward to doing this more. And I see us both smiling 
and feeling good about this. So I think it's, I think it's just super awesome. I think so too. And I think, uh, you know, our goal ultimately is just to, we're not professionals. We're not doctors. We're not, I think we're just that friend for, or at least we strive to be that friend who you can talk to when you're feeling the, the, like I said, the WTFs of your spirituality, like what's going on with me? Um, Maybe tune in. And when you hear something that we have to say, you know, get in touch with us. We're going to try and set up our Facebook page or maybe a website and uh, try and give some of what we talk about in our podcasts out, um, you know, as a PDF for free. As a writer, I feel at least I can share my gift in some way and and put together some things each week for people to kind of read and and feel good about, you know, how they feel and and have some kind of positivity to turn to if, you know, they're living with a bunch of grumpy people all the time or, you know, maybe the not so positive people. So I think this was a pretty successful endeavor for our first podcast. Oh my God, this has been wonderful. And I think, um, you know, um, oh my God, I just totally did it. (laughs) I was trying to avoid that the whole time. Um, basically, you can check us out, um, you know, weekly, basically on our podcast, again, Spotify, Apple podcast, um, and any other cool podcast place you've got. Um, we're definitely going to be highlighting our topics moving forward and we'll have, um, our Facebook page up and running at slightly unmeditated. You can also visit us online at www.slightlyunmeditated.com and sign up for our free PDFs. As Tisha mentioned, she's working on those. And so for now, we're just basically going to be sending you love, light, and good vibes always. We are Lori and Tisha, and we are Slightly Unmeditated. <laughs>